Hello there everybody and welcome back to Magna Carta 2. In the last video we went off and did a couple of side objectives, but now it's time to get back to the main story. What we're going to be doing in this video is going and speaking to the village chief and we're going to ask her for access into the undersea tunnel. If we recall, a couple of videos ago, Judo and Zephy were talking about looking at the records from previous wars to find out if there's any way to save the world which does not require Zephy to be sacrificed. The Mare historical records are all stored in the undersea tunnel. There is a room there that can only be opened by the Mare. We did this to keep our documents safe. But we've been through the undersea tunnel dozens of times, and we've never noticed anything like that. To enter the room, you must open a hidden door. The words engraved on Strauss's monuments are supposed to act as the key to open it. I don't believe it will be very difficult. Not if you know your Lonsheim history. Take this token with you. Alright, so that's that. We have the permission from the chief to go and look at the records, so that is what we are going to do. This is going to require another trip into the undersea tunnel, but seeing as how we've taken care of Jopa, the big monster that was inhabiting the area, we're really not going to have any sort of difficulties. They'll just be the usual tiny monsters down there to kind of navigate through, but that's about it. And if we recall, the undersea tunnel is in a passage just behind Celestine's house here. Alright, so once you're in the undersea tunnel, you can pull up the map here, and our objective is going to be the Tomb of Straws. And like Judo had mentioned, we've been through the undersea tunnel a few times, but we haven't really noticed any sort of library, so the Mari must have their secrets really, really well guarded. We have, however, seen the Tomb of Strauss, and it was explained to us that that is where Strauss's wife, Asselina, was buried. So I think what I'm going to do for this area is do my very best just to kind of ignore all of the enemies and just to navigate my way through. I don't particularly feel like grinding right now, Maybe I'll do a little bit of it off screen, but because we kind of just went through that big boss gauntlet in Judo's mind, I just kind of want to take a bit of a break from that for now. And I'm sure that everybody watching probably won't be too opposed to me skipping the fighting as well, because at this point, you know, you've all seen enough, so... If you choose to skip all of the enemies, it's a relatively short walk through the undersea tunnel. And we also do have a couple of cutscenes to watch as well, so I want to make sure to make room for that in the video. But we should have enough time. Over 1,000 years of history is written on these monuments to Strauss. If you read the monuments while holding the token, they will light up in response. Which means, when all five of these monuments light up, the secret door will open. Easy, right? Why didn't you tell us about this before? I didn't know about it before. Even among the Mare, only a handful know about this place. The chief told Zephy about it because she trusts her. I'll have to thank the chieftain for her faith. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit of a puzzle. We have five stars. And the way that you'll want to remember this puzzle is just to designate each star with a direction on the compass. So north, east, south, west, and then the middle one is just the middle one. And the only real difficult thing about this puzzle is knowing where to start. 
after you started it, it will tell you exactly where to go. So we're going to start with the middle pillar here. The sign appeared with thunder from the east. The sun rises and declares the beginning. So then you would go to the pillar facing east, which is this one over here. A new race came across the sea from the far east. O oh, Karta, your bodies carry a shining wondrous jewel. Your own mighty power shall be your ruin. The arrival of other tribes caused a war. The unlucky star appeared with the west. At sunset, the true dark world. And I think that this puzzle kind of confuses some people because they don't look at the map. They kind of just start in the middle and end up going the wrong way. But as long as you pay attention to where each star is on the actual map, that will make it a lot easier for you. So we need to go to the west. Signs become reality and the big war began. Dire Carta was now the ruler of the land and all tribes faced extinction. Turn your eyes toward the darkness though. You are crushed with despair. Rich souls shine, stars in the south glare. I like these little poems. Suddenly a hero born of Carta and human appeared, built a floating fortress and expelled Carta. Go thou north to where our king is, step into royal city which draws the miracle aura. This is kind of a nice way to kind of summarize the Great Carta War. The scars of a protracted war, a world that has been returned to ashes, is covered in the shadow of despair. The living succumb to the allure of death. True light is in the four monuments. Open the core gate and touch the eternal history. And of course, the core is going to bring you right back to the middle. See the rays that bring fertility and prosperity to the dark land. It is the light of the hero's life. Lonsheim Oasis, may it last forever. So yeah, they definitely have their library very well hidden. Nobody would have probably ever suspected that. Which is good, we don't want all these records falling into the wrong hands. So, this is where the Mari store their records! Crystals, eh? I take it that the Mari people store their records inside of these. Yeah, they store the information inside the crystals by converting them into Khan. Let's start searching them right away. Uh, the thing is, the records are written in Ancient to keep them from being stolen. Ancient is a lot like the old Mari dialect that we used to use, so all Mari can use the language. I'm the only one here who can read them! Wow, you can read ancient, huh? I just might have to rethink my opinion of you. Just leave it to me! I'll translate for you! We're counting on you. Oh, look! Here's one about those possessing common. Blood ties to Magna Carta. Could you skip to the part dealing with the Magna Carta bloodline and read just that? Sure! Just a sec. I'll try reading from this part. However, it is not the case that all those born of mixed human Carta parents possess a common. On the contrary, it is exceedingly rare for descendants of those bloodlines to be born possessing a common. The reason the common of those of mixed heritage outstrips those of the Carta is because they mature. The limits of the common of the Carta are set from the time they are born. In the case of those of mixed heritage, their common undergoes maturation until that person stops growing at roughly age 18. However, in those who have endured especially harsh environments, the common is sometimes strengthened by leaps and bounds. Ah, 
So that's why Shuenzite was waiting for my common to mature. I think you're right. Furthermore, these subjects possess a significant trait. Like the Carta, they do not die unless their common is destroyed. Unlike humans, they do not die unless their common is destroyed, even if they suffer an otherwise fatal wound. Hmm... You know, the Sentinels also have that trait! You're right. I wonder if the Sentinels also have something to do with the Carta. However, unlike the Carta, those who are of mixed heritage are unable to absorb the con of living things. In comparison to the vessels that house vast quantities of con, the amount of con they inherently possess tends to be relatively small. It has been speculated that if they were to have been born with a sufficient amount of con to fill their common, they would have been terrifying beings indeed. What about Strauss, then? He was perfect, no matter how you look at it, right? The next record is entitled, Ill Omens, the Doom Seeds. I'll try to read it for you. Please do, Celestine. Are Doom Seeds truly the source of a catastrophe that will destroy the world? It is true that when doom seeds fall, crops have difficulty ripening, and the efficacy of wizardry or commons either disappears or weakens. However, it has been determined through studies that the stories of people weakening and dying when exposed to seed fall are unfounded rumors. Take a close look at the available recorded phenomena. Anyone familiar with history should spot it. They should notice that our environment is identical to what existed prior to La Strada. We who are alive today merely accept an excess of bounty from La Strada. Does no one realize this? The Seedfall is a warning bell from nature in response to humanity's profligate, one might say egotistical use of Khan. Present, the word agriculture has fallen out of use. However, it is said that prior to the Great Carta War, humanity was required to till the earth to obtain our food. In the era before the appearance of La Strada, human wizardry was capable of little more than lighting a candle. The humans who lived before then were no match for Cartas who could throw gouts of flame. The data clearly shows that the rapid advances in human wizardry all occurred after the appearance of Lestrada. It's almost like they're saying that the Doom Seeds aren't a bad thing at all. I have absolutely no idea what the heck they're saying. Well, I guess all this might be a little over your head. Hey, you're making fun of me, aren't you? Now that I have my memory back, it's like I have more facts at my disposal, too. It's opposite of how things used to be, huh? Nobody asked you. What's the next one? The next is... Wars. Curious similarities. I wonder what the similarities are. Beats me. I can't read a word of that. Sorry, Celestine, but keep trying to read it for us. Okay, let's see. 800 years of peace came to an end as two wars occurred in Lonsheim. The first was the Avis War, which ended with the destruction of Avisburg, the land of the Avis. The second was the Ruhalt Civil War, which broke out in Ruhalt. Uh, 
A person called Tots invaded Avisburg using a monster weapon called the Demon. Tens of thousands of Avis lost their lives as a result. The handful of Avi survivors lost their country and were forced to live from then on as a wandering people. Not much is known about the Tots person. Not even how or where he obtained the monster weapon they called the Demon. History was never my strong suit, but I had heard that the royal forces had assisted Avisburg, but suffered a crushing defeat. The Demon annihilated the Avisburg forces. Also, witness accounts say that the Demon's abilities and appearance strangely resembled that of the Guardian, which existed in the time of the Great Carta War. The Guardian? Celestine, please keep reading. As for the man who started the war, Tot suddenly went into hiding one day. Hostilities completely stopped, and the war came to a sudden and unexpected close. Then, 150 years after the end of the Avis War, war broke out again, this time in Ruhalt. This is known as the Ruhalt Civil War. This was a rebellion begun by a human aristocrat named Srots, who was plotting to depose the royal family, which was eventually put down by the royal forces. This war also claimed tens of thousands of victims. However, Srots, the ringleader who started the rebellion, disappeared and was never found. And it is said that Srots used a monster weapon called the Shadow that resembled the Guardian to carry out his atrocities. Tots and Srots, Demon and Shadow, that's a strange similarity, all right? There aren't many accurate contemporary records of the war remaining, but they say that the battleground areas were scorched, and the Lonsheim Royal Forces troops sent there faced a hard fight. Plus, it seems that both of the ringleaders who caused these wars somehow managed to disappear. They have an awful lot in common with the war we're in now. It's strange. It almost sounds like there's been somebody like Shuinzite every 150 years or so. The monster weapons written of here might be the same type as the Sentinels. Aw, oh, come on. Don't tell me that Tots and Srots are Shuinzite's ancestors. It's strange, all right. It's more like they are Shuenzite himself. <laughs> no way! Humans don't live that long! When I was assigned to protect Avi's traders some time ago, I asked the Avi's folk about Tars. They said that Tars persistently targeted a young man who was risking his life to defend Avisburg. In the end, the young man was captured, but immediately afterwards there was a ceasefire and the Doom Seed stopped falling. You're saying that the young man was a Magna Carta? Even the way that the Seed Fall completely stopped after the war ended is the same. It's likely that in each case, he found the Magna Carta and sacrificed him. But why was it necessary to start a war? The world would be saved if he simply sacrificed the Magna Carta, right? Schwinzite said something like, I caused this war to force the Magna Carta to mature. But there seems to be more to it than that. I concur. There must be a reason behind the other commonality that monster weapons were used. For now, let's go back to Kotamare. We need to digest all this information. There has to be some ulterior motive.
All right, whoo, it was a lot of history there, but it's good history. The first time I ever played this game, I found the story to be really quite confusing. There's a lot of history crammed into the game and a lot of terms to remember, a lot of names and stuff like that. But as we get near the end of the game, I think it does a very good job of sort of explaining everything to you. The game kind of gives you time to make up your own sort of theories about the game and to kind of digest what little information is given to you in little bits throughout. And then as we get closer to finishing the game, it does a really good job of having little sequences like this where it just kind of puts everything into perspective for you. And if you're still confused, we are going to be getting another little bit of dialogue when we get back to Kodamari, which is going to further explain anything. And we'll probably answer any other questions that you might have. What I'm going to do is I'm probably going to take a little bit of an opportunity to perhaps do a little bit of fighting in the undersea tunnel, get a little bit of cash and whatnot before I actually head back to Kodamare. But I will meet everybody back in the city for the next video. Thank you all so very much for watching and I hope that I will see you next time.